welcome back to Indian Omics. We have been speaking with uh, Mr. S. S. Mundra, the former DG of the Reserve Bank, uh, Sham Shinivasan of Federal Bank, and Suresh Ganapati of uh, Macquarie Securities. Uh, we'll also be joined by uh, Sandeep Parikh of FinSec Law Advisors. Shortly, we are discussing the new NPA resolution rules put out by the Reserve Bank. Well, uh, Suresh, to come to you now, uh, these new rules, uh, what impact will it have on the public sector bank's capital? Do you think that 2.1 lakh crore, which has been announced for them, will be enough or will it have to be vastly scaled up? Yeah, of course, it is going to be inadequate. Uh, in fact, Lata, in our earlier report itself, we had pointed out that uh, if we were to assume a certain kind of haircuts for many of these uh, assets, which uh, stressed assets which have been created out of a regulatory forbearance, the total capital requirement actually would be closer to 3 lakh crores. So, you know, the actual number could be now 40 to 50 percent higher than the 2 lakh crore that the government is um, budgeting for these uh, public sector banks. No, uh, what you're saying is that... Uh uh, the uh, capital is not even enough for uh, uh, slippage cover or uh, are you saying it is enough for slippage yes, cover, not right. enough for growth? No, no, no. So this 2 lakh crore was just barely meeting for all the provisioning requirements under the earlier rule. Oh, right. Now that obviously you have accelerated your recognition for some of these assets mm. um, and of course in general majority of these SMA loans would also have to be what you call treated as bad assets eventually. Mm. The requirements will actually go up. So this all will be there only to meet the provisioning requirements, not for growth. Mm. Okay. Uh, well, uh, any numbers that you have, uh, uh, Suresh, on uh, how much might, uh, uh, say, only for the public sector banks, the amount of uh, ba bad loan percentage go up by? I think it now stands at about 13 or 14 percent. Yeah, so if you look at, for example, the uh, the amount of assets which are now shown as stress but not as NPLs, mm. roughly it would be about 5 to 6% of the loan book for the entire banking system. So mm. if you were to take into account, for example, uh, the total gross NPLs for the banking system at, say, about 10-11% of the loan book, you're possibly talking about an additional 5 to 6%, and that comes out to be a very large number of about anywhere between uh, 3.5 to 4 lakh crores. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, well, uh, Mr. Mundra, you know, how do you see the public sector banks emerging out of this? Will they, you know, remain anemic for a, uh, you know, reasonably long period of time, uh, you know, say the bottom uh, uh, half a dozen banks? Uh, uh, to be quite frank, and Lata, you would recollect, uh, I had mentioned uh, some time back, I think on your show only when this capitalization was announced, that I see more it as uh, the entire it as, as, a, as a rescue capital rather than as a growth capital. So I think that fact remains so. And uh, very frankly, uh, for a number of banks where they are already in terms of percentage and what uh, at least some addition would come, clearly for a long time, a uh, roadmap uh, would be for them, uh, of course, no growth possibility. Rather, there could be a shrinkage. And maybe ultimately, I think, and that makes sense, at some point of time, some of them should be prepared to lose the identity uh, with, with someone else. And, and uh, I think uh, that is where the, uh, some picture on consolidation could emerge. Sham, how does this change the uh, you know, rate scenario? If banks, as Suresh points out, won't have growth capital, and these are a large number of banks in the system, uh, are we going to see a slightly more free play for, uh, you know, banks like yours, private sector banks, NBFCs, because a big competition is not there? No, uh, it has been so now for at least uh, last two years. Uh, even when the industry credit growth was single digit, banks like us were growing 20 odd percent. And I see that continuing. And as we sort of strengthen our well capitalized, the opportunity increases quite materially. Big wild card, uh, important point in this is, how does the recovery and the resolution happen and how fast mm. through the NCLT process? Mm. If that shows some signs of great wins in the near six odd months, mm. then I think the uh, level of conversation in terms of capital requirement for public sector banks and even some of the bigger private sector banks which have exposure will start changing. Oh. And I think that's going oh. to be a big defining factor since you talked of two, three years. Yeah. On the course of how things will play out, uh, if I take into 2019, 2020, I think it's premature to 
call for exit or merger. Okay, well, uh, speaking about uh, the IBC, you know, so much of this uh, new set of rules hinge on the fact that we don't need all these schemes because we have the uh, bankruptcy code. Uh, uh, Sandeep Parik, to get you on this, uh, are we betting too soon and too much on the IBC? Has it proved its mettle? Um, we are betting our entire house on that, but I think uh, the issue will really bandwidth rather than uh, you know the the institutional mechanism which has been created, mm. and no. uh, hopefully they will kind of catch up on the bandwidth uh, side as well. Do you think very quickly the government should uh, probably increase the number of benches because there is going to be a flooding of cases probably six or twelve months down the line? They will certainly have to kind of keep the house ready for the flood. So I think the preparation should start now. Okay. All right, Sandeep Parekh, thank you very much for joining me in this conversation. I have one question which I want all of you to tackle now, uh, uh, very quickly if possible since we are out of time. Mr. Mundra, do you see borrower behavior changing now? Uh, absolutely. I, I, I think uh, uh, that is quite visible also and yes, it, it will. That, that is for sure. At okay. least uh, I, I don't uh, nurse any doubt about that. That will definitely be a long-term gain. Uh, uh, Sham, is there enough fear of the law and of God that uh, people will come forth with money and somehow resolve? Yeah, I'll break it into two parts. Lata. The uh, 2000 plus is a very aware customer. If they have not honored their commitments, uh, if the intention is wrong, whether NCLT, IBC, they're going to be a problem. If they have suffered business challenges and are well-meaning, I think they will begin to correct and this is a great great way to do that and I'm hoping that it will bring in behavior change. But I really want to focus on the lower ticket guys mm. who have borrowed and have been indulged for long on accommodation and uh, allowing for it as long as it's not within 90 days past due, go on. I think that client behavior has to change and that's going to be the uh, seminal difference and the implication of what we have, what this new uh, asset, uh, you know, the stress asset management processes. Because if on every Friday, a five crore guy is going to be listed in the Krill report, he had never visualized it okay. on one default. He yes. thought it's fine. Okay. I think that's a big change. Okay, um, uh, uh, Suresh, exactly that. Uh, uh, a long only India fund, will they see this as absolutely game changing? I mean, uh, specifically from a perspective of a long-only fund, they would really view these rules and regulations as very positive because, Lata, at the end of the day, what investors want is a transparency of banks' balance sheet. And because of these various forbearance schemes, life was very difficult for all of us to analyze these banks. Now that everybody is bought on the same level playing field and now the bank balance sheets will be very clean, the provisioning will be taken off. Yes, it is going to be a couple of years of pain, but then at the end of the day, this is very positive from from a system perspective uh, and therefore it also gives a lot of credibility to the regulator as well as to the entire system and that will be taken very positively by the long only funds. On that optimistic note, gentlemen, thank you very much for joining me in this conversation. Key takeaways from my panelists, one, probably the joint lender forum of bankers for each defaulting case needs to be continued for some time. The Reserve Bank could write in some rules saying that not the, the forum should continue and not 100%, but even if probably 50, 50 or 60 percent of the bankers agree a restructuring plan should be put in place. Uh, uh, the second takeaway is that one or two years down the line, we are going to see uh, a seminal change in the behavior of bankers and borrowers, and that might mean more long-term investments uh, and perhaps an upgrading of India as an investment destination. Uh, a third takeaway is that the government should prepare in advance for the coming flood of cases through the bankruptcy courts, probably increase the number of benches and the bandwidth in some fashion. Thank you very much for joining me in this edition of Indianomics.